It's been one of the most action-packed weeks of racing so far this season. The second week of the Giro d'Italia was a belter. We had both the men's and the women's tours of California. There's been controversy over at the Tour of Norway with punches and fake crashes. We've also got the Grote Prix Marcel Kim, the Tour of Japan, the Ronde de Lizard. We better get started. What a bonkers week it's been at the Giro d'Italia. Chris Froome looked completely out of the equation until he won on the hardest climb in Europe, the Monte Zonclan, only then to concede another minute and a half the following day. Esteban Chavez had a jour sans the day after the rest day, and because his legs were bad, everybody else had one of the hardest racing days of their lives on stage 10. A stage which was won by a young man who continues his upward trajectory, Matej Mohoric. Fabio Aru's campaign has gone from bad to worse. He cracked on the Zonkolan and then completely detonated the following day, losing close to 20 minutes. It will be interesting actually to see if he even starts the time trial on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Tom Dumoulin has been his usual steady Eddie. A really good steady Eddie, uh, but he's basically consistency personified. He never cracks under pressure. He never puts himself into the red. He just rides at the power he knows he can sustain. And it's incredibly effective as a tactic. Or at least it is when you aren't up against Simon Yates. The 25-year-old has shown no signs of cracking whatsoever. Quite the opposite, in fact. His results in the race so far have been quite incredible. Almost Valverde-like, in fact. So according to Killian Kelly, it was indeed Valverde who was the last rider to be more consistent in finishing positions at a Grand Tour. So after stage 14, Yates' average position had been 15.08 on the stages, whilst at the same point in the 2016 Welter, Valverde's was a quite staggering 11.85. That, though, was before stage 15, which Yates won. So, as things stand on the final rest day of the race, Yates has a 2 minute 11 second buffer over last year's winner Tom de Moulin, ahead of tomorrow's 34km individual time trial. Which basically means we are perfectly poised for an incredibly exciting final week. De Moulin should be able to eat up most, if not all, of that lead tomorrow, but then we have a trio of back-to-back -back mountain stages, which start on Thursday. The Tour of Norway was won by Edward Prades of Eskadi. Some people had said that he'd taken a step backwards having ridden for Kakel Rural for the last few seasons, but he's having a great year so far, and this win backed up his recent second overall at the Tour de Yorkshire. The race hit the headlines though for two very different reasons last week. Firstly, Lars Bohm was handed a hefty fine and also disqualified from the race after punching Preben van Heck. Boom was apparently frustrated because Van Heck had slowed down after he'd asked him to push on. And the other incident which went viral last week was this one. A crash inside the closing kilometres of stage one, nothing particularly unusual about that. But then the overhead shots caught Pavel Bernas of CCC faking his own crash so as to be given the same time as the winner. Now there was no UCI punishment from the commissaires on this occasion, but he did apparently get punished by his team, presumably for the embarrassment he'd caused them. Uh, they made him ride on the front for almost all of stage two. Pretty funny, that one. Uh, Dylan Grunewagen took three sprint stage wins, whilst Edvald Bersenhagen won stage two, which was also on his birthday and National Day in Norway. Doesn't get much better than that. Whilst the final stage was taken by Alexander Camp. Right, on to the tours of California now. The men's race there was dominated by Colombians, who won five of the seven stages. And that was down to two super talents, Fernando Gaviria and Egan Bernal. Gaviria, still just 23 years old, bookended the race with stage wins on the first and last day, plus stage five. Now, there's no doubt he benefited from some exemplary lead outs by his quick step team, but nevertheless, to show the likes of Kittel, Ewan, Cavendish and Sagan a clean pair of wheels is something truly exceptional. Incidentally, it was the first time in eight participations that Sagan has failed to take a stage win, two thirds and two fourths being the best that he could muster. And the race as a whole did feel like it was somewhat of a generational shift because the other Colombian to show a clean pair of wheels to his rivals was Egan Bernal, just 21 years old. He dominated the stage to Gibraltar Road, putting 21 seconds into Rafael Maika, who was the best of the rest. He went on to have a slightly disappointing time trial where he lost the yellow jersey to the stage winner there, TJ Van Garden at BMC Racing. But then he demolished, annihilated everybody on the penultimate stage up to Lake Tahoe. He basically made world-class cyclists look like nothing more than weekend warriors. He won the stage and had a whopping 1 minute 28 second advantage over Adam Yates at the finish line. More than enough to regain the overall race lead, which he safely kept to the end. There was also a really great ride by his teammate too. 
Terry Gagan Hart, who worked selflessly for Burnout, but managed a third place in the time trial and on the final mountain stage, which was enough to see him claim fifth place in the overall classification. And also, a great ride by young Brendan McNulty, who finished seventh overall. Expect to see plenty more of those two atop general classifications in years to come. The other stage win was taken by the extremely likeable Tom Scoynes, exactly one year after he famously had to abandon the race after crashing, suffering concussion, and then trying to ride on deliriously. It was a hard-earned win, his third career stage win at the Tour of California, and his victory celebration really has to be seen to be believed. Make sure you check out that one if you haven't done so already. The women's race was cut to just three days this year, which was a little bit disappointing, but nevertheless we had some very exciting racing over those three stages. Kendall Ryan couldn't believe that she was victorious on stage one. It was easily the biggest win of her career, and the emotion was clear for all to see. Kendall, incidentally, is the older sister of friend of the channel Alexis, who finished fourth on that opening stage. The GC battle was played out though the following day to Lake Tahoe, where we saw an audacious move from Katie Hall with still five kilometers remaining on the climb to Daggett Summit. She took four riders with her at that point, and that five woman group had been whittled down to just two by the time they reached the foot of the final climb up to Lake Tahoe. And it was soon after that that Hall attacked again, dropping Taylor Wiles and soloing to victory and the race lead, which he would keep until the end of the three stages. It was close but no cigar for Alexis Ryan on the final sprint stage into Sacramento. She was pipped to the line by Cuban Arlena Sierra. Now you may remember Arlena as the rider who raised her arms in celebration when she finished second to Colin Rivera at last year's Trofeo Alfredo Binder, which at the time did feel a little bit strange. However, back in February, she wrote an article on the South African website Develo, where she details her career and the challenges she has faced, not just in racing, but in life in general. And it is a truly inspirational read. If you do read it, you will realize why second place in such a big race felt as good as a victory for Arlenis. And it is she who is our Rider of the Week this week. And I thoroughly recommend that you read her story. Uh, we're gonna put a link in the description below this video, uh, but you can also find it on my Twitter, which is at Daniel Lloyd one the four-day Umakaminbira is the longest-running women's stage race on the current calendar. It's now in its 31st edition. Uh, the four-day race is the first European stage race on the Women's World Tour calendar, and it all kicked off on Saturday just gone. Anna van der Breggen, Annemiek van Vluten, and Ashley Mormon Pasha are amongst the big names riding this year, and all three of them were particularly aggressive on the opening 108km stage. However, they were all ultimately outshone by Wild Deal Sabrina Stoltens, who attacked them in the closing kilometres to come home with a 17 second advantage over the next group, which was led in by Lisa Brenauer after that trio were caught by a small group. The following day's 26 km individual time trial though was always going to shape the race, and it was no surprise there to see world time trial champion Annemiek van Vluten come out on top. However, she was pushed close by compatriot van der Breggen, and it's those two who sit atop the GC with two stages remaining. Nasser Bouani's season appears to be getting back on track. He won the Grote Prix Marcel Kint at the weekend. Uh, Ian Bibby of JLT Condor won the short 2.6 kilometer prologue that opened the Tour of Japan, whilst the following stage ended up in a reduced bunch sprint, won by Takeyaka Amazawa. Second place there went to Gregor Boll, and that was enough for him to take the leader's jersey, and that race will conclude this coming Sunday. And now, before we finish, we also wanted to mention the Ronda de Lizard. Uh, this is an under-23 event where the likes of Andrew Talansky, Joe Dombrowski, uh, George Bennett and Kenny Elisonda have shone in the past. Basically, it's a really good indication of future greatness. And the man with the pressure to live up to that expectation this year is Stephen Williams. The 21-year-old Welshman won two stages and the overall classification and will no doubt be courted by a number of World Tour teams for next season. Well done to you, Stephen. Right, that is all for this week's show. We'll of course be back at the same time next week, at which point we are going to know the winner of the 2018 Giro d'Italia. We will also be here with the Tour de Fjord, the Hammer Series in Stavanger, and the Tour of Belgium. So we hope to see you then. In the meantime, make sure you check out our shop, shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. Uh, if you'd like to get your hands on a limited edition pink t-shirt. Uh, also, we've got a video you should watch. Emma recently went up to see nutritional expert Aska Joikendrup, who answered a whole host of your questions and gave some really interesting answers. You can find that video just down here.